I'm so nervous about my nerve test. I should be a lyricist. All right, I'm sorry, I'm trying. So let's go take a little stroll around and have some fun in between all these doctor's appointments. But anywho, uh, let's just really briefly talk about my hospital stay. I'm not going to go back into the ordeal that led up to it. If you I am on the way to my neurologist after a long and hopefully productive visit earlier this week, uh, this time for an EEG. So let's see how that goes. It's one of many tests that I have coming up in the next few weeks, not to mention my redo at Mayo. So I'm just gonna kind of take you along briefly on all these appointments with me so you can kind of see what a typical month for me or what a typical few weeks for me is like these days. Sounds fun, huh? Partay! Woo! Heather here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you know, if you saw my recent community post, I was supposed to be spring hopping with my daughter. I was planning on going to at least five natural springs. And we had an awesome Florida State cabin booked right on the Sewanee River and it's uh, sturgeon spawning season. So the sturgeon are jumping, which I've never seen in real life. So I had all kinds of big plans for us. But alas, Hurricane Debbie did her debbying and sadly a lot of that area, which has already not had the best luck in the past year as far as storms are concerned. Well, the past few years really. Poor Big Bend area is experiencing a lot of internal flooding in the state. Interior, not internal. You get what I mean. So um, pretty much any of the areas with cabins that have air conditioning are a no-go still. Obviously, I'm not complaining that the health and safety of all of the residents, the staff, and the visitors is priority. Um, but <laughs> instead of having a fun spring hopping, last hurrah before school starts up next week. We are on our way to the neurologist again. Um, so I figured, hey, why not bring you along with me? Because what's almost as good as spring hopping at Florida's natural, beautiful spots, but multiple doctor's appointments to find out what's wrong with me. <laughs> But in all honesty, I did want to show you kind of a realistic week or couple of weeks in my life of what it's like to suddenly find yourself disabled, unable to work your normal full-time job, and kind of still on the hunt for the answers that you need to proceed and progress and get back to some type of normal routine. So you can kind of see what my everyday life has been like and the uncertainty from day to day and how I try to squeeze some adventures in there in between. So come along with me for a very realistic, maybe not super exciting uh, week or two in the life, huh? Oh, I'm always shaking and feel like I'm gonna vomit every time I get to one of these, even though I never get answers at them. sure what I was expecting, but it was not that. <laughs> and it's not typically what I would consider a fun Friday, but you know, hey, it was a new experience. We'll see what comes of it. I did not like it. I did not like the strobe light thingy that they flash at you. I did not like that at all. But it was otherwise painless, just not pleasant. So yeah, that's
that's what an EEG looks like. All right, fun Friday. Let's see what we get to look forward to Monday after a break for the weekend. parked at the spiritual capital of the world, Casadega. It's been a historic uh, community site on the National Register since like the early 90s. So let's go take a little stroll around and have some fun in between all these doctor's appointments. That little room off to the side is where they perform seances. And then this is the temple that they have weekly services at. Such a cute little town. Approaching the historic hotel and bookstore. Pick 
picked up a few back to school supplies and my daughter's favorite food for lunch. I can't believe she's starting high school tomorrow. Monday. <laughs> another day, another doctor appointment, am I right? So Friday was my EEG, and then as you saw, I had a lovely, relaxing weekend with my daughter. We did a little bit of back-to-school shopping and finalizing because she's officially a high schooler now. So she is at high school with both of her big brothers, which that part I love, but I can't believe I have three high schoolers. Anywho, so Friday was my EEG, which is where they, you know, hooked me up to all those little electrode thingies. I have no idea what to expect today. I kind of asked at my last appointment what it was that I could expect today. And even though she explained that I still don't really understand, she said that they'll have three electrodes hooked to my head. And then I'll look at it like a TV screen, I guess. And <clears throat> I don't know why I'm shouting at you. I'm sorry. My voice hasn't really been working that great this weekend. But um, basically they hook the three electrodes up to your head and then you uh, look at a TV screen while they show you images or you watch things or they tell you things I don't know and then it's they're supposed to study how your brain responds to the visual stimuli it's called a visual evoke response test pretty sure that's what it was I think it's a visual evoke response test um, it just said the V E R on my thing and they did say visual evoke so pretty sure that's what it is anywho I just basically feel like a science experiment these days it's not supposed to be painless. It's supposed to be quicker than my EEG was Friday. And then I am off for more laps and fun stuff. I am gonna do a fun little quick Casadega haul with you guys after my appointment though, for a little lightheartedness, cause I just got a couple of little inexpensive knickknacks, but I wanna show you anyways. Friends, let's do this. I just changed, but I'm not sure. If... Okay, so that appointment went way faster. I think it was maybe like 10 to 15 minutes. I did not like it, but it was not painful and it wasn't hard. It was a really easy test. I just had to look at the screen while the black and white dots kind of reversed, flashed back and forth, you know, like it swapped back and forth. Anywho, uh, apparently the test is designed to determine my brain's response or something with the optic nerve and how it reacts to the flashing in this and the back and forth. So, I don't know. We'll see what that determines. <laughs> um, I know that they do it to see if there's an issue with the visual signals like being received or sending properly, but what the potential impact of any of that is, I don't know. Um, but I do know that I'm going to show you this quick little haul before I leave the parking lot because I have a few extra minutes. So, check out the few cool little things I got. Let me grab them. Like I said, I didn't get much because I'm on a very, very tight budget. But since my vacation with my daughter got canceled and that's getting refunded, I decided I would get a couple of little trinkets. Um, I got a sticker for my water bottle. Since you guys know, if you're no stranger to the channel, that I am having to start over from scratch. So I only have one lonely sticker from Fort Clinch. My first car camping with my baby. Oh gosh, this isn't coming off like a normal sticker. Oh, this is heavy duty. I think this is meant for a way heavier duty than a water bottle, but that's what I want to put it on, so. Oh, 
Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, it's quite the centerpiece statement, so I'll have to, you know, fill around it with littler ones, but I couldn't turn it down. I liked that sticker. And since Casadega is one of those places I go to over and over again, I wanted one to commemorate my experiences there with my daughter. Next up, I got two stones. One of them is peach selenite. And look, it's shaped like a heart. Isn't it beautiful? Peach selenite is supposed to activate your immune system, cleanse your aura, um, help heal past traumas, I think. I'm going to put a little description of what it does. I took pictures because I knew I would forget everything, but I know I wanted it. <laughs> and then the other one I got, I'd never heard of before, but amethyst is one. Amethyst and rose quartz are two of like my absolute favorite stones. I know, call me basic, but this is chevron amethyst which I had never heard of before, but obviously it's because of the little, come on, focus. The chevron design, isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna put a description of what that one does too, because I don't want to mess that up either. But those are the two that really spoke to me and the lady that was ringing me out said that I made some awesome choices and she was nice enough to package them in white sage to cleanse them, but I'm still going to clean them and then I'm going to put them out in the sun to charge up. And then the very last thing I got, like I said, it was just a very quick, little, simple, inexpensive haul, but huh, I've been looking for these literally for years. My favorite artist, I'd, I've gotten some of her calendars before, but look at these pictures. Oh, this is their Whispers of Healing Oracle cards. And I wanted Oracle cards by this artist. And how perfect is it that they're for healing? It says, the Whispers of Healing Oracle is designed to help you nourish, strengthen, and restore yourself to emotional, physical, and spiritual wellness. Whether you're wishing to heal a broken heart, resolve a work challenge, or discover ways to fine tune your attitudes, it's meant to be a source of support, guidance, and light. And it says to turn to this whenever your health is compromised and the soothing energy and wisdom and concentration on it is a way to balance wholeness and wellness. So right up my alley right now. And how perfect, I'm gonna show you the cards obvious. Actually, you know what, hold on. Let me open this up and show you some of these beauties. Oh, it has a little guidebook, yay. Okay. Tell me, these are not some of the most beautiful pictures you've ever seen. I'm hoping the camera is in focus. You're getting a sneak preview before I've even seen them. But isn't she amazing? Oh, I could just stare at the work forever. It's just so beautiful. Anywho, so I'm going to definitely incorporate these into what I'm trying to establish as a morning meditation routine to kind of start my day in the right mindset, grounded, focusing on the right priorities, instead of being all floopy and chaotic internally as well as on the outside right now. So that was my little haul. It had a lot of intent and purpose behind it. It was not, you know, just impulse. I'm not allowing myself any impulse purchases or things that I have not already decided that I really, really, really want or need for the rest of the year. It is going to be tight 2024 that's the new motto for the year tight 2024 <laughs> as in super tight budget so all right i have been in the doctor's parking lot long enough 
I am going to head back to home base and I will see you guys for any more shenanigans today, but probably not because I'm just going to spend the time with my kiddos when they get home from their first day, see how that went, cook dinner, all that. And I'll meet up with you tomorrow for MRI day. Woo! See, I literally get a party every day. <laughs> On the bright side, hopefully by next week at this time, I should have more answers than I do now. All right, it's a Tuesday. It's another day, another doctor, another test. <laughs> Today is MRI Tuesday. That's the theme. We are getting an MRI of my thoracic spine and my lumbar spine. We've already gotten an MRI of my brain and my C-spine, or my cervical spine, which did have some abnormalities. And because of all the issues I keep having with my arms and legs and all of that, they wanna go ahead and just evaluate the entire spine. Um, I'm. I'm kind of curious too, like if they're able to see like if I have any masses or anything like that that are not related to the spine, but in that area, like if they can see those. I think I'm getting it with and without contrast, which I hate that injection, I hate it. I hate the way it feels when they um, inject you with it. And I hate, I always end up feeling like icky for a good two or three days afterwards. I just feel off and all of my symptoms seem to be magnified, so. Hopefully these are the last MRIs I'll have to have for at least a month <laughs> um, until I get back into Mayo's neurologist. But anyways, we are heading in. We are hoping for some kind of news, some kind of answers, something to explain things. So hopefully this will be a step forward in that direction. I will check in with you in there if I can or if anything interesting happens. Otherwise, I'll let you know how it works. Hi, I haven't picked up the camera since my MRIs and it is now Thursday. I just wanted to kind of catch you up to speed a little bit. I don't know if it was the contrast from the MRIs or if it's just because it's the first week back to school and I've been getting up earlier and not sleeping the greatest, probably that. But that's why I look like this. And I have hardly moved out of bed the last, you know, 36 hours or so. Um, okay, my initial intent was for this to be a continuation, picking right up the very next day after I had my MRIs done on that Tuesday, I believe it was. In actuality, it's been about a week and a half since then, now, almost two weeks now since then. And if you saw my last video that came out of order, you know it's been a rough time. I did just kind of want to briefly fill you in on the hospital and then what I'm doing going forward in the next few days. And then I'm going to wrap this up. We're just going to leave it with the nice, happy explorations at Casadega with my daughter and just kind of what a typical week or two is like in my life now as a newly disabled single parent who is still trying to not totally give up on all joy in life, <laughs> not to be dramatic. But anywho, uh, let's just really briefly talk about my hospital stay. I'm not going to go back into the ordeal that led up to it. If you want to know about that, please check out my story time. I'll link it below. But basically, I spent three days admitted. They wanted to rule out all possibility of sepsis, stroke, um, and like seizures, that type of imminent, we have to handle this right away before you leave kind of a thing. And when they were able to thankfully rule those out, um, my MRI did still show the same abnormalities that my last one did, which is no surprise since that was less than two months ago. But they wanted to make sure that this episode didn't cause significant changes on the MRI. So they did do that comparison, which 
FYI, I do not think I tolerate contrast well. This has been three times now where I've had bad reactions over 24 hours later. So I think I'm done with contrast. But um, <clears throat> it wasn't significant changes. So um, basically, even though every doctor there had their suspicions <laughs> and told me what they felt that it was, my discharge instructions were to follow up with my neurologist and complete the testing that's currently pending and get the results in and then develop a treatment plan with them. So hold on, I just need to pause and catch my breath. Okay, I'm back. I'm not going to get into my whole list of symptoms. Um, every single test, every single thing that I've done, every single thing that's been discussed, ruled out, researched, etc. So I would really appreciate, I know um, that a lot of people who have had similar experiences, I love to hear from them in the comments, but unless it's something like that where it resonates with you and you feel that you have something, you know, to add in that regard, um, no matter how well-meaning, just please know that I have ruled out the easiest first usual suspects and um, it's not just <laughs> anxiety or just stress as a few people have suggested, but um, anywho going on, I just wanted to, um, like I said, I'm not going to go into every single minute detail because I feel like I've already put myself out quite a bit on this platform and you guys know <laughs> way more than I ever expected. Perfect strangers out in the world to know about me. Not that I feel my community here is strangers because I have come to really appreciate and uh, care and respect a lot of you and really I'm just so grateful for all the support you've already shown. But um, it is a little disconcerting having people that don't know my chart or my history or my existing diagnoses or my existing symptoms just randomly throw things out that I know I can tell that they've based off of like a few minutes of one video. So I guess that's the only thing I'm trying to limit. But <laughs> moving on, um, the majority of the doctors that I spoke with while I was in there and that examined me, um, especially the two that saw me in the emergency room before I was transported and before the IV steroids had had a chance to start working and helping some both told me that I presented to them kind of like a classic MS flare that they're used to seeing that come in the emergency room in that type of crisis level. Um, so they both were, you know, thought that it was pretty consistent with MS, um, which is one of my top suspects already. Uh, I don't believe there's any harm in at least throwing that out there at this point. Um, but apparently a few of the other doctors were a little surprised that I hadn't already been diagnosed with um, some other things while waiting to see if there was any additional or comorbid conditions from a neurological standpoint. Um, I do have a lumbar puncture coming up. Um, as you saw from my previous footage, lots and lots of labs. They took 11 vials of blood from me. Uh, you know, I had the little electrodes hooked up to my head. So I'm waiting on all of those results. They're all still pending. I was told that those take a little bit longer to get in. So I'm hoping that those results come in this week. My lumbar puncture is coming up soon. So I'm hoping to get those results fairly soon. And then I have one more neurological test after that um, that's scheduled for the beginning of September. So I'm hoping that that might shed additional light on what is going on neurologically. But based on my evaluation at the hospital, this latest episode, everything up until this point, and basically every single one of my symptoms can be explained by another condition that they seem to think I should have already been diagnosed with. So I um, do have an appointment to see my primary care doctor this week, and I am trying to get back into my neurologist um, even before the rest of the testing comes in to discuss 
possible next steps, but um, I'm hoping that this means that I've made progress in that regard. So the rest of this week is going to look like that, me following up with those doctors and just waiting for the results to come in. I'm a little worried about the lumbar puncture because I know the number one side effect from that is a bad headache. And I have had a headache since last Wednesday when I first went into the hospital that has not gone away yet. So that makes me a little nervous. But at this point, I just want to know everything I can know and figure out the best way to attack it so that I can put this behind me. If you have made it this far, I want to thank you so much for watching. I know that this was not what a lot of you signed up for when you started following Heather's Hikes and Adventures. I've been pretty light on the hikes and the adventures lately. I do still have some good educational, helpful content plan that doesn't require me to physically camp at the moment that I do still want to share with you all because I do think it will benefit a lot of people that are car camping or doing van life or traveling around solo. So do look out for that coming. I'm not even going to try to stick to a specific posting schedule since every single day is so different. But I could not end this video without, I know I already mentioned it once or twice and thanked you already, but I want to send a truly heartfelt thank you. I mean, from the very bottom of my defective little heart right now, <laughs> that just the love and the kindness and taking time out of your day to write to me either words of encouragement or to be vulnerable yourself and put out your own story that can relate and the experiences that you all have been through. I mean, it's been, if you only knew what a huge help it has been for me to read your feedback. I've read every single comment. If I have not responded to them yet, I am getting to it. Um, my fingers are still not 100% functional when it comes to texting. I have to take quite a bit of breaks to keep them from seizing up on me and cramping really bad. So I'm just doing everything slow these days. But it, it means the world to me. And I have heard a lot of your suggestions. I do want to just mention um, as far as social security disability, um, almost Three out of every four, almost 75% of applicants get denied on initial application if you do not already have a diagnosis that is on their short list of pre-approved conditions or diagnoses. For instance, MS is one of those conditions. But if, if you aren't confirmed as having a specific condition on that list, um, up to, like I said, 75% of applicants are immediately denied on initial application. Up to 50% are then denied at appeal. And then at that point, you pretty much have to have a Social Security attorney. And for the second appeal, with the hearing and all of the documentation, and when you actually go to the hearing, that's typically when other eligible applicants finally become approved. And that turnaround time can be two to three years on average. And there's currently a five month backlog for social security benefits once approved to actually be issued. So I just wanted to mention that because I am looking at all available options and any, and any um, benefits that are available to me given my current circumstance. But um, until I have that diagnosis confirmed, um, it's not going to be, a, you know, a quick or easy process. So I'm trying to do everything that I can on my end. I have applied for emergency food benefits. I, um, you know, I've looked into immediately eliminating any bills that aren't 100% necessary. I'm going to be switching my internet provider to one that is cheaper since they just came to the area you know, things like that. So I'm doing everything in my power to reduce my monthly budget. And in the meantime, if you guys, you know, want to watch my videos and just let them run, go through my playlists, um, you know, that would be awesome. <laughs> if anybody feels like binge watching or just having me play in the background and, you know, my melodic voice that so many people love, you know, just constantly talking in your ear. 
that would help. Um, every dollar in ad revenue is, you know, going to be appreciated at the moment. <laughs> Um, but I, in all seriousness, I do want to thank you all for being here, for watching. I'm going to shut up now and quit rambling because I don't even know how long this vlog has ended up being. But rest assured, the next video will be car camping or van life related before I put you through any more of this roller coaster. Thanks again for being here, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.